Hi, this is Chris Monk at Highline Guitars, and you're watching episode 50 of From the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, and probably the next episode, which will be 51, I'm going to talk about how I went from this to this. When I first started building guitars years ago, if I wanted to paint it or clear coat a guitar, I was using rattle cans. Now, I'm not saying rattle cans are uh, a bad idea. They actually will work pretty well. However, you really can't use them if you're going to be trying to increase the number of guitars you're building or improve speed and efficiency and that sort of thing. If you're looking at building more guitars and you want to improve that uh, quality and efficiency and so on, you're going to need to invest in some kind of a spray system. And when I started looking into it years ago, the only experience I had was with airbrushes. And I quickly found that what works with airbrushing doesn't even come close to working with a bigger spray system. At the same time, however, as I was talking to other builders and spray gun and compressor manufacturers, I found I was getting a lot of what I felt was bad advice. Uh, I had people telling me, oh, you need to get a you know, a 10 to 15 horsepower compressor with a 60 to 80 gallon tank and a couple of HVLP guns. And while that sounds pretty cool, it's really, really expensive. And when you look at my volume of production, it doesn't make sense at all. So what I had to do is uh, kind of take a step back and really evaluate uh, the type of work I was doing and uh, the sort of spray equipment that I was going to need. And one of the things I did was I looked at that really big expensive uh, production level equipment and then I looked at my airbrush and I thought there's got to be something in between. Something that uh, will fill that void. After doing hours and hours of research on the subject of spray systems, I began to learn that there are some options available to small shop luthiers which will allow you to enjoy the efficiency and the quality of spraying your uh, paint and clear coats without having to break the bank. Now before I get into the specifics about the type of equipment that I use, and I'll do that in the next episode, I thought it'd be a good idea to give kind of a basic overview of what types of systems there are out there. Right now, probably the most common type of spray system is HVLP. HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. Back in the old days, um, before HVLP, we were using conventional guns that were really high volume, high pressure. Uh, HVHP, although I don't think anyone actually called it that. But the way those guns worked is uh, the paint was, or the, the clear coat was atomized using a high volume of air, which is measured in cubic feet per minute, and a high pressure, which is measured in PSI. So you would have a gun that was uh, maybe requiring 90 PSI and you know 10 to 15 cubic feet of air. To do that requires a very large compressor. The problem is when you're pushing that material out of the gun, high volume and high pressure, that atomized paint, and atomized means that the paint is broken up into tiny droplets and mixed with air. When that hits the surface that's being painted, a lot of it has a tendency to bounce off and become what we call uh, overspray. A lot of it also, those tiny droplets will bounce off of each other and just simply uh, disperse into the air. So you have this cloud of material. And in the end, out of all the stuff that's in the can, only about 20% of it is landing and staying on the surface that you're painting or clear coating. That's a huge waste. So to improve the efficiency of that type of spray equipment, uh, they came up with the HVLP, high volume, low pressure. And basically, you're still needing a lot of uh, air volume, which, I, as I said, is uh, cubic feet per minute. But um, you don't need as much pressure. So you can lower the PSI from, say, 90 PSI down to around 40. And because of that, the atomized material coming out of the gun isn't going to be 
ending up as a cloud of overspray. Most of it is going to be landing on the surface and it's going to stay there. So instead of only 20% of the material remaining on the surface, you're getting about 80% of it if, if you've got a good gun. Uh, the disadvantage with those type of with the HVLP system is that for a lot of years you had to have a very large compressor, something that would put out 10 to 15 cubic feet per minute and uh, typically you would have to have a large tank so you're talking about that 10 to 15 uh, cubic feet per minute and a 60 to 80 gallon tank and that usually required uh, around 5 to 10 horsepower so if you price something like that today that's going to cost you you know fifteen hundred dollars for a compressor that large and then the guns can range anywhere from uh, you know there are a lot of cheap ones on the market but there's also if you start looking at some of the higher end models they get fairly expensive but then came along the turbine system the turbine HVLP system and these really kind of changed the game for a lot of people with an HVLP turbine system, you're getting the whole package. You're getting an air pump and you're getting the spray gun. The way the turbine system works is you have a turbine air pump, which is very similar to a vacuum cleaner, except that instead of sucking, it's pumping. The turbine is about the size of a bread basket. It's very small, it's very compact, and that makes it very attractive uh, to a lot of um, uh, buyers. Uh, however, you'll notice as you, you do research on these systems that they're marketed as having either two stages or three stages or four stages, and they rarely explain what that means. They just assume you know. Uh, what it essentially means is with a two-stage unit, you've got two fans driving the air. With a three-stage, you've got three fans, and then, of course, with the four-stage, you've got four. And then I, I think they even go as high as six, maybe even more than that. The more fans you have in the turbine unit, the smoother and more consistent the airflow is. And if the airflow is smooth and consistent, then the finish quality that it sprays is going to be smoother and more consistent. So does that mean a four-stage is better than a two-stage? Well, of course, it's definitely better. Does that mean a two-stage isn't, isn't of use? Not at all. What it means is if you're going to go with a two-stage unit, you're going to probably have to do a little bit more level sanding uh, before you can buff out the finish. With a four-stage unit, if you apply your finish correctly, there's very little level sanding necessary. So the, 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 the whole production uh, side of it is much faster with a four-stage turbine than it is with a two-stage turbine. So what it comes down to is you have to ask yourself, do I need that advantage in speed? It should, is, is paying for that going to be worth it? Otherwise, if you're not going to have that kind of volume and you don't mind doing a little extra level sanding, a two-stage unit is the way to go because it's dramatically less expensive than a four-stage unit. Now, another type of gun that has hit the market in recent years is the LVLP gun. And LVLP stands for low volume, low pressure. So not only is it like the HVLP and that it's got low pressure, but instead of having high volume of air, it uses a low volume of air. And really the, way the best way to think about it is uh, the less air you push through the gun and the lower velocity that you're pushing that air, the smoother and uh, more efficient the transfer of material is to the surface that you're painting. So where the HVLP has a transfer rate of anywhere from 75 to 80, 85%. The LVLP gun, when set up properly, will have a transfer rate that's closer to 90 to 95%, so there's even less waste. Uh, the other big advantage of the LVLP is that you don't need a great big gigantic compressor. So instead of getting a, you know, a six to 12 horsepower, compressor with a 60 to 80 gallon tank, you can actually run these very efficiently with a very small, almost like a consumer grade home style compressor. So anything basically from one and a half horsepower up to about two horsepower will work just fine. And you don't need anything really bigger than a five to 10 gallon tank. So 
you can uh, pair the LVLP gun with a much lower powered compressor and get fantastic results. The disadvantage, however, is you know, HVLP came out and that was all the rage and everybody bought HVLP systems. And the whole market is sort of behind uh, pushing the HVLP system. So all these people have invested a tremendous amount of time and money into HVLP. Now all of a sudden here comes something that is so much cheaper and so much more efficient. And I think people have been a little bit hesitant to adopt it because they've already invested so much money into HVLP. But it is starting to catch on more. In fact, I use an HV or an LVLP gun uh, to do some of my uh, spray work. And in the next episode, um, I'll be kind of laying out all the uh, tools that I use and explain um, what I recommend uh, for uh, doing a spray finish. So that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. And like I said, in the next episode, I'll conclude part two by uh, giving you some recommendations. And of course, I'll include links for everything that I'm using. And uh, until then, uh, take care and we'll see you soon.